Hi, my name is Daniel Davies. I work here at Craft PowerCon in Gothenburg, one of two facilities we have here in Sweden. What we're going to do here today is demonstrate how quick and easy it is to replace a power module from our FlexCraft rectifier. After viewing this demonstration, anyone at your facility will be able to remove and replace a broken down power module from our rectifier, and that will cut your downtime to a minimum. Before I start with this demonstration, let me quickly present the FlexCraft. Our rectifier is the only truly module switch mode rectifier on the market. It lives in a tough world and because of this tough world we've designed it to be as flexible as possible for our customers. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure you turn off the power to the rectifier. After you've turned off the power we're going to remove these two sets of screws So you're going to want to remove these screws ever so slightly because the front plate is going to slide right off. You do not have to remove the screws entirely. What we're using now is a screw gun with a 15-bit Torx, slightly longer bit to make it a little easier to gain access. We're going to remove the front plate. Now these cables aren't going to be the easiest to remove with just one front plate removed. So we're going to remove the upper level above in the same manner. It's going to slide right out. What we have here now, is we have our three-phase cabling, our ground cable, our communication cables. This is what's connecting this module to our control module. We're going to start by removing the three-phase. You're going to reach in, you're going to pinch as close to the connection as possible, squeeze, and pull out. Pinch squeeze and pull out. Those are those three. We're going to remove the communication cable, grab it firmly, shake it left to right, it'll slip right out. Grab as close to the connector as possible. We're going to need a pair of pliers. There's a zip cable right here, zip tie, holding it. The set of three-phase cables together for both modules. We're going to remove that. So now we've removed these three cables. The ground cable is what remains. We move that. So what we're going to do is we're going to move to the back of the rectifier and we're going to remove the back part of the rectifier. At the back of the rectifier, you'll find sets of screws on the outside of the capsules. There and there. These screws hold the module in place. Here are the bus bars. You have to obviously remove the load cables from the bus bars. We're going to remove the connection from the output bus bars from the module to these bus bars. We'll start with that. You're going to need two 13 millimeter wrenches. Just loosen these for right now. Now, on each of these connection points, you have two washers, a nut, and a bolt. It's a good thing to note that every time we connect these washers and bolts we have a green marker to show that they've been tightened and fastened to the correct, correct torque.
And what we got left now are the screws. You're going to need the 15 bit torque again. These screws you'll remove entirely. Only four screws, four bolts holding this module in place at the back of the rectifier. To make it easier to get it out, we're going to give it a little push. Just a little, little push. That's enough so we can gain better grip of the rectifier module. Now we're going to go to the front. Now we're here at the front. I'm going to grab the fan, fan a little steadily, sturdily. Here are the three phase cables. I'm going to slide them in here so they don't get cut by accident. I'm putting the communications up in here. Just be careful that you're careful with all the cables. There's not many of them. Just keep an eye on them when you're removing it. You slide it out. When you get about half ways, module weighs about 12, 10 kilos, grab a firm grip, pull it up. Oh, taking the module out. We're going to grab a new one. We've got a new module. There's a little lip on the bottom level. I'm going to put the corner of the module here. Make sure you're careful with the cables. They look fine to me. You want to slide the module in evenly. If you get stuck, just back it up a little bit. It's already in place. We'll go and connect the back part first. We'll start with the screws. We're going to reverse the entire process. Fasten it so you don't feel that the screws are going to spin. Make sure it's nice and secure. You don't want to break the screws. Now we're going to connect the bus bars with the bolts. You want to look, if you have more than one module, you want to look at what direction the bolts are sticking out. The outs, one, outer bus bars are pointing outside, inside out. I'm just going to fasten it by hand right now. And the inner bus bars are facing outside in, bolt wise. Outside in for the uh, inside out for the outside bus bars. Now, as I mentioned earlier, with a green marking, we have a torque wrench. You need to have 25 newton meter, 25 torque when fastening the bus bars. So I'm going to hold the bolt side and fasten the nut side. So you hear that click. So they're fastened correctly. It's very important you fasten it with the correct amount of torque. So the back is reassembled. Move to the front. We're going to connect the communication cables first. Make sure they're connected firmly. Those are good. I'm going to pull out the three phase cables from the little tuck in spot. I'm going to connect the 
earth cable first, the ground cable. We're going to connect the three phase cable one after another. You're going to hear a little click sound. You want to pull at them just a little bit to make sure they're sitting firmly. That one's firmly, that one popped out. Firm, firm. So now we've reassembled all the wiring. We're going to put the front plates back on. Start with the upper one. Put them on the screws. Slide it in. Just 15 torques again. On the other front plate, slide it in, fasten this one as well. Well, there you have it. We've removed and replaced a FlexCraft power module. It's that quick and easy. It's that simple. There are only a few sets of cables, a few sets of screws, and you're good to go. It doesn't take more than 20 minutes, and you're back up running at full speed. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this demonstration. If you have any questions, visit us at info at craftpowercon.com. Thank you.